of the same uh, permissions and also authorization event handler which will substitute the default permission which is tested to the variation one in the case of the menu item of the menus if i go to the navigation module I have one. So for those who are joining, I'm explaining how the dynamic permissions work for the content items so they can replicate it for the menu. So in the navigation, if we go to the controllers, it should display all the menus at some point. Um, So it's just setting for manage main menu, okay? Maybe this permission could be changed to manage menu. You just call it manage menu. Manage main menu will work. You, you don't even have to change it, maybe. And here is just testing at once for one menu. But what it should do, actually, it's here for each menu entry, we add the, well, we should, where is the list of menus? I don't know. I think it's called management menu because at some point there was only one menu, the, ma the main menu. So the permission was called management menu. And when we changed that to, uh, to handle multiple menus, we didn't change the permission for compatibility. Um, so at some point it should look for every menus to list them. I, I can't remember where. But the idea is that when you add the menu to the to the list of menus in the drop down, I don't know where the drop down is maybe here. Yes, model.menus and model.menus, where is the model? Index, 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 index here. Okay, model.menus here. Menus, 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 menus here. Okay, here is loading all the menus, okay? What it needs to be done, if you need a, another collection, And uh, I don't know what type it is. Uh, it's a title part. And what has to be done is, uh, for each of the menu, you just call services dot authorizer dot authorize permissions dot management menu with this content item. So like the current menu, okay? And by doing that, it will call the authorization pipeline for each menu item, for each menu, sorry, for each menu. And what you will do also is another, is a class which will intercept this and look for a variation based on the menu name. Okay, so it will check for the permission on this specific menu. And in parallel, you will have a set of dynamic permissions which will be created for each of the menus. So you will have like in the contents dynamic permission, you will have manage main menu, just one, because there is one only, uh, only one permission, the standard permissions for the menu. And there will be the get permissions here, which will uh, loop over all the menu instances and create a dynamic permission for each of the menus. So in the role, you will be able to click manage main menu or manage menu for each of the menus. And if you check that, or what you need also is you can keep the, you can have manage all menus and all, which will be a static one. So you can give the right to someone to edit all the menus at once. Okay, the, the administrator should have that. But you could also then after um, have a manage menu for each of the menu items, each of the menu definitions. Okay. Okay. Um, if you want to change the manage main menu name to manage menu, you can, but it's hard to do that because the, the permissions are already saved in database, so you will have to change all database records with permissions. So I don't suggest you to do that. Uh, you, what you can do is manage main menu will be the placeholder to manage all, menu, all menus. And you can create new ones, which is called manage menu with a variation of the name like this, like this thing here, manage underscore, like manage menu underscore the name. So there will be one static permission and another one for dynamic permissions like uh, 
uh, you will need to change this like this. Let me show you contents permission. Uh, where is it? Navigation. Where is the permission? Here. So management menu will define a manage menu for everything. So if you have this permission, you can manage everything. We you will just have something like that. Manage menu. Okay. Manage menu. And this one will have some dynamic uh, variations. And in the code, you will look for manage menu. And manage menu will be implied by management menu. So you can say description uh, colon implied by, and you say here uh, new manage main menu. So you just say that with this one, you just say that if someone has the management menu, it will provide the manage menu one. Just test for manage menu. Okay. You test for management menu. If you gave the management menu, it will have it because it's implied by management menu. And in your dynamic permissions, you will see, oh, are you looking for management menu? Let me see if there is a permission for management menu main or management menu footer or management menu whatever. Okay. You should have enough uh, information to start something and be blocked and ask me something else. Um, Showing you is always the truth. It's the best way to do that. That's why you should ask. There is not no other best way to do it. There must be other ways to do it, but they are wrong. <laughs> they are not wrong. They are not as good as this one because it was meant for that. And you see, it's it's very powerful because the user just asks for, can I manage the menu? And your dynamic permission event handler will say, actually, you want to say if you can manage the menu named main, and I have permission for that. Okay. You will have to change it in core then. Yes, it's a, it's an addition that you will have to add in core. It could be done in another module, but uh, we want it. If you do it, we want it, so we will update the, the core, definitely. Let me close the... I do the thing, Benedict. Um, I can tell you, we're we're uh, making jokes on French people with Zoltan. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We don't do that. Ah, oh, very nice. You know, I I have a better one. <laughs> big. Yeah, almost better. Yeah. Question apart from um. Uh, it's outside of, uh, it's not to do with menus. Can I ask it quickly? You can. Um, why would um, taxonomy terms not uh, be cached by a syscache? That must be a reason. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, there's always a reason. I don't know. We we'll have to check. Uh, I Maybe. Don't, I don't know either. I've been, I've been trying to debug it today and I can't it's, see why. It's not about debugging, it's about configuration. Where is the cache configured and what has been configured? Maybe I miss something like lazy load, loaded collections, something like that. Oh, yeah, well, I thought it could be lazy loading, you know, but I actually um, made it so it wasn't la lazy loaded and, um, and that seemed to still not work. Really, really weird. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to carry on looking at it, but it's it's really weird. Um, just wondered if you knew. I can see it happening on a couple other things, though, like um, queries with repositories. The queries aren't being... Uh, if you query the repository directly, um, the queries aren't saved. Um, so I don't know. I have to check. Maybe configure. I think it must be configuration. Because for each query that is done, you need to say to set the cacheability of the query. 
and some of them are done live. So it's, for instance, HQL queries. We there is a flag we do when we have done the HQL query, and we say cacheable true. Okay, and but maybe for repositories, it's a configuration at the Fluent and Ibernet level. Ooh, maybe yeah. So some things like that. I think that that's that's it. And uh, I also did a an implemented a specific event for that too. So maybe I missed some things, and that's it. If you have, if you say that the repositories are not cached, I have to check that. Or you can. It's, uh, let me show you where it's where it's done. Um, just reverting everything. I actually thought you were um, I thought you were Lon at first, wearing the oh. Harvest T-shirt. <laughs> so where is this? Um, let me think. It's in the framework. In data providers configuration conventions. Yeah, I saw the um, I saw the provider for um, cache convention. Look at this one. Uh, Classic export record. So, for instance, for the records, if you do some queries on the records, it just say yeah, cache. So it will go through this code when it's configured. It's a I, uh, it's an Hibernate uh, logic that you can add. Hmm. Uh, uh, where about? Uh, sorry, whereabouts? This convention. This is one place. There are so many places with that. So. Ah, cache convention. Okay, okay. I didn't. There, I, the, yeah, the amount of cache stuff blew my mind when I was looking at yeah. it. Um, so there is one here. There is one in. HQL, but default uh, uh, HQL query, you can see it here. I fixed it. Well, I, I included a patch to fix it, actually. Cacheable. You see here, for the count, for instance, when we have the HQL query, we say, yes, you can cache this query on account. You're not sharing your screen, by the way, just so. Oh, sorry. I, it stopped. So I was, that's why I was asking where it was. OK. Ah, okay, so there's no I class instances. So maybe that's why the cache convention isn't being used. That's right. This yeah, it looks like this stuff isn't even being used. Why? It's not used, no, but it's dependency injection. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So but... it's not used, no, not directly, but it will be found and used. Do a breakpoint, start your instance, and you should go there, and you will see for which for which instance it's, it's cached, and uh, and then also this one you see for HQL, and there are so many places where you create queries, like also in the default query, there must be where is this um, default query, default content query. Yes, this one must have some cache too. You see here when we create the. The, 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 the oh, query wizard. On. Can you do, um, you've got set cacheable. Is there a dot set second level cache? I saw online that there was two ways of setting um, the cache using configuration. No, maybe... I don't think there is something like set second level cache because when you say cache, it's second level cache. The mm. first level cache is not called cache usually. No, but I saw there was another setting. I couldn't find out where it was in the code. Okay. Region, cache mode, but not yeah. Try it, yeah. Yeah, I'll keep I'll keep digging in. But um yeah. Alright. Thanks. Or you want to create permissions for layers too? Don't do that. Or do it in another module, but it's crazy. <laughs> separation between layers and widgets. Maybe, maybe a separation will be good. Maybe layers could be used by more things than widgets. And maybe widgets could be used by other things than layers. For instance, Sipco is using page as a layer, but it's a fake work. 
maybe a widget could have a container and the container could be a layer or the container could be a page or anything else and uh, and some things like that so but we, yeah we, um, Piotr is not here yet. No, he's not. yeah, we we used to have some bets on when Piotr will join. Twenty three minutes past, I reckon. Um, yeah. um, Where's Bertrand? Bertrand also, you know, it's summer vacation for the for his girls. He has to take them somewhere, I think. He will join. He said he will join, but uh, he will be late. Okay. So okay. Um, status. If any anyone else has stupid questions, Benedek always has stupid questions, but he's too ashamed to ask them. He asked uh, Zoltan. <laughs> Should I read them up from? Oh, you from, can. Uh, <laughs> be fun. We have a full notebook of them. Yes, please start to read them. We're, we're going to finish in two or three days, maybe. I don't know. There is no I really as an ebook. Um, I'm quitting Skype. Um, then, 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 what do we need to talk about? One seven. Because every, every day Nick is is uh, is promising. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. I want. I want to. You, you tell people. Oh, to tomorrow we we ship tomorrow. Every Actually, year. I have already. I did say it to someone today. <laughs> yeah, one seven. Uh, new websites triaging. I did a lot of triage last week just to postpone to one seven one the things which were not um, critical. Um, new bugs fix. So let's. Uh, ah, I'll, again, I'm just losing the screen. I'm paid to answer your question. Don't thank me. They pay me. It's like when you buy a car, you don't thank the seller. You gave him some money. That's the same thing. I'm paid. Like, thank you for the car. No, you paid me. Well, so. Is it in your contract? Not just developing Orchard, but also answering questions on the forums? No. But yeah, no. Yes, yes and no. There is no contract. Develop. It's my contract says develop. So uh, if I if I was dumb, I could just say I don't want to talk with the people on the forum. I'm paid for developing, not for talking to people. Um, they are they have weird name like like Norwegian or oh, Netherlands. Sorry. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Yeah, I want to share to show the, the status. Um, I... When can I start doing triage again? Today? Well, I'd like to start. You told me not to push anything until the next release of Orchard. Oh, everything which is active right now on 1.7, you can do. Can I? Which is active on 1.7 because I did a triage, so let me show you. Let me show you. Send you are following my my uh, advice, which uh, everyone doesn't do. Which I guess was bad advice now. So issues, uh, advanced view. Six okay, it's up from the four I had said, but. Uh, If we have to fix some things, these are those ones. If, okay, and there are some high things to. But somehow the big ones have been fixed. But those ones I want to check or, uh, or fix. 
I have already postponed everything to 171, and if I find some of them which don't make sense for 17, I postpone them again. Uh, and okay, markdown filter should not. Can you go show me? Just show me 19288. Markdown filter should not use auto new line. Oh. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, this one is tricky. You see. So before we do the same mistake as you, I want to remove this. The idea is that uh, when uh, we refactored comments, I refactored also the filters. And so, so the filters right now are really wrongly implemented. This is bad. This is not a filter. It's a body filter. It's not a HTML filter, but they are called HTML filter. But it's actually a tiny MC body filter. And you can't uh, select which of them will be used. It's it's a flaky implementation. Uh, flaky. Flaky. Yeah. Um, and I tried to make them a little bit better when we refactored commands, but making it a little bit better is not uh, helping anymore. Any, any, so, uh, and what I did is I allowed the comments to, let me show you because you don't, you don't even know about that. I know about the refactoring. I, um, you broke my, um, my own version of it in, uh, the forum. Module. Yes. You know about the refactoring. You don't know about the new features. New features. Let me show you the new feature which, which have been done like eight months ago. Uh... <laughs> nice, Il Ilan is small, but you can f you can recognize him. The guy, the guy walking with a microphone. The guy, the guy walking with a microphone, organized on Chan Harvest. <laughs> he was not just the guy working with a microphone. <laughs> then you should write this sentence on your status. The guy working with a microphone. I don't mind. <laughs> as long as it was helpful. Yeah, for the microphone, you yeah, it was, it was helpful. Here. Uh, Here's me. Here's my shirt. No microphone. Um, I should, from now on, I should just be walking around with the mic. Comments. Okay, let me show you. So if I go to content definition and the, the blog post has a comments part, so if I edit the blog post and I look at the settings for... Um, ah, I lost my screen again. I don't know why. So when you go to comments, if you can see my screen, tell me when you can see my screen. Yeah. So in the comments part, settings okay. for the blog well, post. One sec, Sebastian. I can see the video. Waiting for the speaker. Hurry up, because I will lose control again. Can you see it? No. Can you see it? Uh, yes, I've got it. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, so you see the formatting. comments part here. Comments formatting. No formatting, BB code filter, HTML and code filter. And if I had enabled markdown, I would also see markdown filter. What does that do? This is just to let you define what in what format you want to enter your comments. So should that not be on the body part as well? No, the comments doesn't have the body part. Yes, I see what you mean, but it's wrong. Um, 
This could be on the body part. That would make it. That would make it um, because that's much better than typing in markdown. Uh, but typing in the word markdown. Um, no, yeah, ma ma no, 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 it's this, wrong. Uh, because... the flavor. This, this looks like a flavor. Flavor. Uh... Well, you know, you can specify. Yes, that's the issue. That, that there is a mismatch between flavors and filters, because okay. here I implemented Markdown as a filter. I also implemented uh, uh, the HTML encode as a filter, but Markdown, for instance, is a flavor for the Markdown editor. Okay. For the editor, ah. And okay. you could still want some filters. Mm -hmm. Like the BB code filter for the Markdown, or a filter which will transform all your uh, media to the I don't know to the correct URL using your domain, or to add some specific code inside I don't know whatever you want to do. So that's why I say it's uh, flaky. It's, it's not. We need to think about that. We need to think about about uh, filters in general and make it better. Yeah. This solution is better than what we have in 106, but it's still wrong. Okay. So I want to remove it and let the comments be like, it, like uh, what it was in 106, just enter text and maybe some custom HTML tags and that's it. Okay. So I will remove it and I will go back to the old iFilter interface. Thus, this markdown filter should not use auto, li auto line. So auto line was included because of the comments. So we need to remove that and to remove the filters from comments. And when we can do something good, we will do something good. I want to upgrade the um, the markdown sharp library we use at the same time. Uh, they changed the uh, word auto new line. Uh, in there, so it would make it would be prudent to update at the same time. Yeah, okay. cool. fine. Uh, so, what has been done since seven days? Uh, eight days sick. Okay. So, content by some plain outputs, attribute, and classes. Yes. So. Uh, Bertrand found that if you would add a class dynamically to the content shape, it will not be taken because the template was not using the tag helper. So it was not taking the metadata from a shape, okay, which is actually done in the widget template. So it changed the, the default template for content to reuse the classes and IDs that you can add to the content shape. Um, grammar fix, okay. Refactoring the media library. This is the big uh, thing uh, that was uh, discussed last week about the media library. Yeah. Using file system now, uh, and based on the yeah, uh, Antoine found and fixed some issues, and I also found and fixed some issues, and David Aiden too, uh, because of the refactoring. Uh, this one is what? Oh yeah, uh, in the upgrade module. Um, so now the upgrade module doesn't depend anymore on media library and taxonomy, the new one, which means if you have a 1.6 and you migrate to 1.7, it won't enable the new taxonomy by default. It won't enable the new uh, media library by default. It won't enable the new output cache by default. It will keep your old modules, which will still work. Okay. If you want to upgrade to the new media library, you enable the media library, and then the media library tab will show you the migrate, to migrate to the new media library. Same thing for the taxonomy. Okay. So you can still have the, your, because for some websites, you can't go directly to media library because you're using the media picker and the old media thing. So it will be longer to, to migrate your code. Uh, same thing with taxonomies. Maybe you don't want to go to the new taxonomy for any reason. 
So this way you can upgrade whatever you want. Uh, fix some bugs. Um, new. I updated the font awesome uh, file, and I didn't use Matt's um, pull request. You can close it. Sorry. Uh, fixing detail view for comments. This is who fixed it. Okay. Uh, dumb, dumb question regarding the updating icons. Did you just pull the latest uh, update from Font Awesome so yes. all, the, all those icons are available to be used? Yes. There were new icons, and so just updating the file gives us new icons. Matt um, Melling was needing the new, the, the new one because he wanted to use the Dropbox icon for his Dropbox menu, module. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I, I can't share my screen. It's just stopping. I don't know why. Now it's stopping faster and faster. Okay, let me give me one second. I will switch. I will remove my uh, screens. Yo, Zolta and Benedict, are you guys getting the heat wave that's over in the UK at the moment? Come again? Indeed. It's it's very hot in Hungary. Oh. For days. Yeah, it's like 30, 30 degrees or something like that. Uh, even more. But it's always raining for a weekend, so everybody is very productive. <laughs> yeah, guys. When are you, uh, you guys going to show off your uh, forum implementation yet, or are you, uh, you saving it for a rainy day? Actually, we are using it for uh, uh, for our internal website, oh, so it's God. not a public-facing one. Your website should I hear two users? <laughs> no, four, and the, uh, it will be four tomorrow. <laughs> So yeah, uh, we need strong, really, really huge server for that. Okay, uh, going on. Can you see my screen? Uh, loading. I can see it. Yep. Um, so uh, adding a patch from Reset to take uh, Web API constraints into account, uh, then. Red Byron fixed some uh, issues for the media field in uh, IE. Then um, some other issues with the media library and the migration and the refactoring, uh, fixing spec flow tests. Um, uh, updates, then a bunch of bugs which were closed. Uh, this one from that one, uh, some folders were not used anymore, so you remove them. Uh, synchronize the version number of the warm-up module. Added the missing string, mag string max length. Um, fixing what? Yeah, fixing a potential bug here. Um, fix again, small fix. What is this one? Yeah, fix the route for the, some actions which were wrong. Lots of small fixes. Uh, oh, this one is also to use a different an Ibernet driver if we are on SQL Azure. Otherwise, it will not work all the time. Uh, and the fix is nice. It's that if we find in the connection string database on windows.net, it means it's SQL Server, but on Azure, so it's switching the driver. 
uh, I upgraded to Lucene uh, 303. Uh, what does that give us? I don't know. It gives us, the, it lets you use the Lucene country projects if you want to, like spatial or. Uh, uh, Is it worth? Um, I know that I know that we can't use the I sharp lib library, but, but I I so Lucene that it itself doesn't use that. No, but the, you said the contrib library. Yes, but you can. It's up to you. We um, so outer curve, uh, outer curve, or chart can't come with that inside, but nothing prevents you from installing it into your installation. No, no, absolutely. Um, I was just thinking, do we have any contrib modules in ours? That uh, from the previous version. No. No. Okay. Fine. There, we don't have IC Sharp code anymore. We are using uh, another one, which is MIT. Uh, yeah, I think that's Sharp Lib or something. Okay. Cool. Um, this one was a bug reported from. What was it? Uh, yes, I think from Antoine. Uh, the title of the media was uh, overriding the title of a page. <clears throat> this is about that uh, if you were editing an image with the image editor the, and cropping or resizing it to a lower definition, the image file will be actually, uh, its size will be higher because it will use a 100% quality thing. And so I changed it. I forced it actually because each of the browsers have their own quality default. For instance, Chrome is 100% and Firefox is uh, 92%. So I force it to 92 like Firefox. <clears throat> um, UI thing. Sipke, playing with our chance of code. He deserves that. Um, this is, yeah, fixed up. Uh, which index was used for uh, a content picker controller, uh, which is the search in the content picker. And, and, and uh, fixing what here? Uh, oh, yeah, well, sort by. It would blow up if no sort by was uh, specified. Yeah, uh, yeah, it will add an ordered by on account, just if it's not account now. Yeah. Oh, there are the page here. Um, this one I explain you. I fixed the random uh, filter because the random command is different for each database. I thought it was in uh, HQL, but it's not in HQL actually. Um, so there is a new interface to provide custom statement for each database. So when you well, it's, when you create a provider, you can also provide custom statements. Randomized queries also are no more cached. So if you are using the randomized, the random filter, it won't cache the the query using syscache. Sebastian, uh, regarding the order by fix, uh, I heard and and looking at that, it really should do that. Uh, that it um, it causes an error when there are multiple tables joined that uh, and no order specified that the column ID is ambiguous. Yeah, I, I think it's still open and in my list. I will look at that. I saw that too. Great. Um, and should should not be hard to fix. It's uh, because it's somewhere here. You see, as ID, if I call it foobar, there won't be any conflict. That's something like that. It will be easy to fix. Because this ID okay. then is used by different tables and it doesn't know which one of them to use. So it's just about this select select here, which has to be defined again. I wish I had that. And this is from Antoine fixing the dashboard um, localization. Uh, we test. Uh, oh yeah, the import export was broken for users and layers, so widgets actually, uh, because uh, of the new identity 
resolution mechanism we implemented in the import export. So every time you have a new kind of identity, you also need to provide a way to resolve identities. And we didn't do that for users and for layers. It's very easy, but we forgot that. So it, they were not uh, imported. Breaking the widgets import. Um, add a new check here. Um, small bug in the workflow list. Uh, ice, oh, just, uh, yeah. I'm, I made a little explanation. Um, so the idea is that the media shapes to resize things or use the media profiles had the logic to render the, the thumbnails. So what I did is just extracted this logic into a service and the shapes use this service. So you can also use the same service if you want to render new thumbnails or profiled images in your own modules. Okay. Um, adding more chain tokens by default again, based on Zoltan's feedback and another one, uh, is just adding more chain content or even explaining it can be chained with text or URLs in some cases. So you can use text tokens after uh, calling some existing token, returning some string. Need for most of them. Um, and fix the, the pager and offset in projection. So if you're using an offset in projections, the pager will not, will not have been uh, computed correctly. Easy things. Who's talking? Did I miss something in the chat? Interesting. So if you saw I C sharp zip lip somewhere, it's because uh, you haven't cleaned your binaries folder for a long time. Or someone else is using that from a module in the gallery, which is fine with me. Okay, okay. Um, what else? Triaging. Do you have any sites? New oh, sites? I have sites. Um, oh, we, we lost our perfect there. Uh... Let me give you a list of sites. Which one did I give uh, last time? We won't be implementing permissions for specific media folders in the future. Maybe. We said we will not, but it was in the previous implementation. It was for media. Uh, and we had to explain it like 10 times to Nick before he stopped asking. Uh, but for the media library, it might be different. Uh, now you can manage it. Before, it was just a reflection of the file system. But when you say permission, it's just about letting, letting them know about a folder and letting them import things into this folder and change into this folder. That's it. We won't pre there won't be permission to get media. Like if you type the URL, it will be served. This we can do but at least we can hide the folders. Yes, 
So not serving files, but for the management part, yes, we, we, we can do that. Uh, Bertrand is answering a question, which is, I'm sure is not this one, but Sipka's one. Yes. <laughs> um, I think the guy even admitted it was Visual Studio in the end, actually. No. <laughs> what? He, no, admitted, it wasn't I think he admitted Studio. it was Visual Studio on the forum. It wasn't Visual, Visual Studio. Uh, okay. No, the problem was that uh, you were getting um, exceptions for um, hits to static files. Uh, the exceptions were very much from our child. Um, for some reason, it was uh, generating wrong passes for static resources. Sebastian can probably explain that uh, better. Um, and, and those were creating exceptions. What? He said he had sh just shut down re Visual Studio after recompiling. He restarted the app and it had um, gone. He couldn't reproduce it. The issue that he had after getting the latest was that he had an incompletely compiled application. So that was a different problem, I think. Okay. So websites. Speaking of which, Sebastian. Um, I don't know if we actually clarified our earlier assumptions that uh, patient.co.uk had moved off of Orchard, which is not correct. We haven't clarified. Thank you for clarifying. I don't know how, but there is no more proof anyhow. So this is still a very high traffic site on Orchard and never was moved off of Orchard. So somehow it's an option. Still looking for. Look for the Azure. For the what? Azure. Azure. Azure what? There is nothing Azure here, is there? No. You sure? <laughs> Archer dot Azure dot web dot. I don't know what. The, well, maybe. I don't know how they are doing that. I don't know what they do with Archer actually. That's maybe the question. Maybe they're doing like um, uh, Samuel is doing with his websites. But uh, I don't know. And uh, I, I assume it's Sorchan because when you do that. I might be speaking to him tomorrow. I'll try to get some clarification. This is Sorchan, but. Actually? This is Orchard, mm -hmm. and I can st I, I still can't see anything from Orchard in the view source, which means they must have removed the proofs. So that's why I thought it was not no more Orchard, but it's, it's Orchard, because this shows it's Orchard. This is an Orchard screen. And they have an ad for .NET Nuke. And they have what? There is an ad for .NET Nuke on top. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 that's, that's because of, of Sebastian me. must have been checking out .NET Nuke and he got retargeted. Yeah, I understand uh, yeah. That. Okay. <laughs> so you, you are lucky there is no porn here. Uh, but yes, this is because of that, because it tracked me. <laughs> the easiest way to prove it is just to put uh, orchard.users in the URL. What? Here? Our users test account test logon. No, just leave the rest of the URL on the same and it should display the same page, in fact. Buy and get it. I'll change users to uh, orchard.users and leave everything else the same. Yeah, but this is users. I, I already know it. It's, it's the users view. Ah, boom! Hmm. No, because this is no, uh, this is, no, no. This is look, view source, form, form action. Okay, you see search.asp. There's something weird here. 
Oh, that's weird. And this is our charm, for sure. Well, yeah, that's that. That's that looks like, but I could not be it too. Yeah. That's oh, a weird usage. Filter anti forgery token. It's a mix. It's a mix mode of multiple things. Uh, this one uh, from Hello yeah, Computer. Last one. This one is very nice. You can see it, but it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, this one is a standard company website. Uh, this one has search inside. Cool. Friends, show me the seven results. Ocean. See, this I can tell. <laughs> and this one company, nothing special. Oh yes, there is a nice search box that expands when you click on it. I think that's it for last week's new websites. Um, and we had a nice rating. Uh, what else? It's lagging. Um, it's okay for me. For me as well, it's not lagging. A little bit. Yeah, that's it. That's we know that uh, internet in Amsterdam is very expensive and doesn't work really well, so it's okay. Uh, any news from um, Harvest videos? Who wants to answer that? I have some videos. Yeah, someone asked, that's why I, I brought it up. No, they're, they're still being edited. So the, the unfortunately, um, we weren't able to get them all edited, so we're still editing them, and uh, we're going to need to make a decision as to where we're going to post them and how. Question, Ilan. We have some of them in a somehow low resolution. Because he, he, he hasn't reprocessed them in okay, high Okay, but he will. Okay. All of them will be processed in high resolution. Okay, great. I, I, I no, just... no, no, I'm, I'm clarifying. The question is still where we're going to post them and how. Oh, and Nick, uh, I shared, because I have your video, actually, in somehow low resolution, but you don't know it. You're beautiful. And um, I shared it with a customer who wanted a forum solution. OK? Oh, no, Sean. So I shared it. it was just private sharing. So that's just for him. Because it's a low resolution, I shared it with him. And so low could, resolution? I mean 640. So it's, yeah, it's it's not really I have nice. the high res. I have the high res version of, of Nix. It was just a preview of the edition from um, Sean, so I shared it. Cool. Because okay. you wanted to know about the forum, I didn't want to, to give your name. And... <laughs> so he has everything about you. He knows everything about you. He's a big customer. He knows everything about me. He's like stalking me. I, I, he, he, I will give you some uh, big customers like this, big consulting services. You send them uh, I take 10%, okay? And uh, every time I send you a, a customer, I, ten, ten, I take 10%. Depends on the rate. <laughs> but yeah, fine, okay. Um, all right. Uh, I've seen the video. It looks very good. So. What? How come? I, I I recorded it on my PC. Oh, but you don't see your face and everything. Oh no. I just heard the voice. So. Can Can I show a, a snippet, Ilan? Of sure, it? of course. Um, Nick. Elon, uh, I don't know if you saw in the chat window. Is it? Is there any option? Can we do this on channel nine? These videos? Yes, there is an option. I mean, that's that seems to me like the natural place to put them. No, it's actually not the natural place to put them. It's a nice added place to put them. The natural place to put them is around the orchard community wow. environment. Yes, sir. But to have them in in such a public place, I agree, would be very helpful as well. Well, we could always link to channel nine from. From the Orchard community, you know, it's just that way That's they're indexed, that way they're indexed by developers going on Channel Nine very more naturally. That's that's an option. Yeah. 
Okay, I, I, when you see it, you tell me just to show you how it, uh, I will stop the sound because it won't work. Uh, it's loading. Okay, so I will pause it because you need to see the transitions and everything, which are beautiful. Okay, hold on. This is like more professional than what you can have with build or whatever conference. I mean, whatever small conference like build windows or any. Okay, cool. I can see. For you. So you see there is a fade in on the slide. I can't wait for me. Wait for me. It's still loading. Oh. Beautiful guy up there. It's not, it's not catching up depending on your connection. Oh, there it is. It's choppy. I love the fade in. No, the videos are well are well done. And then yeah, you will see at some well point it, it's so there is this is a wide angle and at some point it also uses the 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 close angle. This one you see on and it splits the screen too with a power point on the left and your face on the right. And uh, when you have your uh, finger in the nose, he, he stops the video and he goes back to the power point and <laughs> And at at here you can see you can hear that you fucked up because you have a microphone but you talk behind you, so the microphone doesn't get anything. So the sound the sound is crappy, and you keep reading your slides behind you. <laughs> I like to uh, I like to thought I like to think I'm part of the um, part of the crowd as well as the uh, teacher. This is very nice. And you see, oh, zoom in into the demonstration. So that's very nice editing because it's it's focusing on different parts based on the context and then goes back to you, you see, and then your demonstration. I, I like it. Thanks, man. It's a nice demo. I like it. So we have some of them like this. Best ones are my sessions, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> uh, yep. That's it. Uh, so one seven. Nick, when? Well, we have 21 bugs outstanding. 26. 26 bugs outstanding. Um, I reckon if I'm if I'm allowed to now push again, um, <laughs> then we may be able to tack it, tackle it um, by Friday. Else, I'm going to France. So, okay, I fixed twenty bugs this weekend. So, if I help you, we should do it this week. Okay, I will fix four. We don't expect any help from the other guys. Well. I like to believe that they're going to provide uh, um, emotional support. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Just by sending emails. When is it released? <laughs> You're late. I accept. I, I expect Sipka to send encouraging emails during the day. Well, you've all. You, it's all I'm doing. Giving emotional support. That's that's what I need. I know. Emotional support from Sipka. Very great. So, uh, it's Tuesday, so Thursday. Yeah, I have some clients, they, they need this uh, new version. But you but can Thursday use the new version already. I know. It's not bug-free, but it will never be bug-free. Well, we and have 200 outstanding bugs, so it's not... <laughs> <laughs> the, all the main features are, are there. The upgrade is here. And uh, you can also provide us with uh, outstanding bugs we haven't found and which are important to fix, so... Can use yeah, it already, yeah. and it's yeah. and it's it's tagged one seven in the code. So if you install it, it's written one seven. I've noticed, yeah. So it's one seven. It's just not public one seven. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm already running uh, two websites on you see? X. So I'm also running two websites on Onex. I upgraded my blog to one. Dot 
Anyone wants to add anything? I pushed some cool yes. stuff for um, my forum module. So, um, Soltan's already pulled it, and Sivka will pull it. Uh, thanks to Sivka for the, uh, some cool code, and to Zoltan for the nice um, ideas. Um, yeah. That um, sounds bad, Zoltan with these nice ideas. That sounds bad. <laughs> yeah, you know these are the ideas. Uh, after them, half of the code is changed; the other half is removed. Okay. So, yeah, and nothing yeah. works. Yep. We're down to a third of the module. <laughs> he made you change the categories to content items. Uh, sorry. He made you change the categories or the I don't know whatever into content <laughs> items. Did he now? No. Just for exporting the forum? <laughs> yes, I did. I see a connection here. <laughs> uh, where did you see inline editing? Are, are you, zone, Zoneman, are you trying inline editing? Okay, so Bertrand wanted to say something. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask about uh, media upgrade, uh, how fast they are now, because I haven't oh, tried them since. They're still uh, slow. They are still slow. I, I don't know what, what is slow right now. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be a problem. Do you want a bug on that? If you can, yeah. <laughs> but it works at least. It does work. It's slow, but, but it works. It, it took, I mean, I, I don't have that many images and it took an hour for me. What exactly? Uploading? Or? Maybe I should do it in batches. No. Uh, maybe, that's it, maybe because it's loading content items, so if you oh, have lots upgrades. of them, they are all loading into memory, like the old issue for import-export. Yeah. So maybe it should do batches, actually. So let's say, okay, migrate 50 or 100 items, and you click and click and click again. And... Okay, I'm creating a bug. Or maybe you could say how many items do you want per, per batch. And... Uh, no, no, we should Simple. make the decision. We should, yeah. So we just say... Because I don't know. 50 is not a good number. No, we can handle more than that in a batch. Maybe that's it. I will try to see if it's a batch. Exactly. So because you know what because when I tried with uh, yeah, like 50, it was boom, two seconds done. Yeah. Okay, that's it. No other questions from me. Um, I've been trying also to fix an issue with the output caching, which is duplicating the the result when you use the image resizing module. Uh, I can't repro it on my box, so I have an issue. Uh, but I'm in, into that right now. Uh, people are, are complaining also on the forum. So one guy is complaining that uh, uh, we should focus on quality and no more features. And so, so we did. We agreed to do that for one point eight. Yes. Right? Yes. So we need to make sure that some people oh, are one point eight. eight will be for one point eight. Will be feature. We'll have some new features for sure. Uh, but we need some sprints to focus on quality also, which will not trigger to 1.8, but maybe 1.7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, okay. So we need, to, we will focus some sprints on quality and documentation and, yeah, and websites and everything. That will be the priority. Fixing bugs, making things beautiful and, yeah. So uh, adding in line editing to the core. I didn't take the time to talk about um, uh, one module that we will implement for 1.8, which uh, should be the um, migration, the staging module to push some content files, modules to production environment, deployment plans. So I have designed it and I need to explain to you to make a blog post a blog post, a forum post, uh, it's uh, it's ready actually, I just need to copy paste and uh, and get some feedback from the community. Uh, but it, it sounds, sounds uh, the module sounds good on the paper. And uh, Zoltan will like it because there are lots of extension points. 
<laughs> and that's what Orchard is about, right? Yes. And not doing that will not be Orchardy. That's it. I'll send a, I'll put it on the forum. Uh, inspired by Drupal mostly. Even though they don't have it. Oh, and we are uh, talking with uh, CodePlex about uh, migration to Git. So be ready. <laughs> yeah, do you want to talk briefly about that? Okay, about yeah, we, yeah, we said yesterday we, we talked about it. The... Yeah, I forgot it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the what they told us is that when we want to migrate, first they will try it locally to see if everything works well because we had some sub repositories at some point in the history and the goal is to keep the the whole history uh, untouched and but what they said is that we will lose all the forks and all the pull requests which means you have and we also have to back them up and save the fork save the pull request somewhere or review the pull re all the pull requests and accept reject them and save them we we are not talking about migrating to github we are talking about migrating from Mercurial to git on codeplex yeah okay so if you have a fork of uh, Orchard that is hosted on CodePlex, uh, what you will have to do is, uh, I mean, back it up somewhere and it's uh, just a matter of cloning it. Yes. Right? So, Clone it locally uh, and uh, put it somewhere else, like uh, on CodePlex, on another project or Bitbucket. And uh, when we are on uh, Git, you should be able to actually then push that uh, into a new fork, I suppose. Uh, if it's a git fork? Yeah. You, yes, you can fork it and apply your changes back on the, on the on Codeflex. I don't know how, but uh, should be. Mm. Or extract a patch and patch it back. OK, except for the uh, cats, any objections remarks warnings uh, what are there? what are the advantages that make the move to git inevitable or... again oh come on <laughs> again again I've every week that, we explain i asked that before and nobody answered so so has one. So so if... branches are just the best git we can one. write history and we can delete branches yeah Done. well this is this is a feature. I uh, hardly think this is an advantage. Oh, it's one of the best. Seriously, it's one of the best advantages you could ever ever have. Trust me, Zoltan, you will you will love it. One day we want to go to TFS. We will be able to go to TFS because it's oh, working with Git too. <laughs> I, just I just lost respect for you. <laughs> TFS. Oh. Is um in your talk about in your talk with Codeplex about Git, did you even feel them out on moving to GitHub from Codeplex? Into GitHub. Yeah, we can't. Can we? Well, we I did really. Well, you know, our chart is a community project, so I have a, a, a vote. <laughs> But it's, it, but it's out of curve, right? So it would be a bit weird to move off Coplex. And also, we got loads of knowledge on Coplex on the forums. Also, they don't have forums on GitHub. How would you do that? Uh, there's a there's a forum module out there that <laughs> some sort of committee community site. With no, it's forum. nice to have a forum because uh, we can link bugs. You have one account. It's nice. This forum module. And you have an account for the chance set and one account for the forums. It's nice. I'm right. sure GitHub is working on a forum. They I mean, must be I working just, on that because people are asking for it. But I right now, see, Codeplex has the I best option. I've seen very little, if any, improvements to Codeplex over the last 18 months. 
they have they have uh, changed to the metro style. Uh, sorry, and uh, and they have changed two times how the bug are closed. Mm. Okay. And, and now there is a TFS online that should give you your answer. And there is Markdown too. Yeah, but they haven't really made many. I mean, Coplex. Okay, so okay, guys. Something around okay. when you ask them, but I so, mean, in terms of, in terms of their site changing much, it okay. hasn't really changed in the last. What do you want to see? I meet the guy on Thursday. What do you want to see? <laughs> you want some feedback? Tell me. Uh, what uh, the Coplex guys? Yes. Tell me. Well. I would like to see forks represented on GitHub in a much um, easier way of, and a much nicer way. Um, I'd also like to be able to switch to um, the code views quicker. I find that I end up waiting a long time for code to appear when I want to just see it. Um, uh, 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 forks, like I said, uh, I'd like forks to be represented in a much more, in a much easier fashion. GitHub is a very nice way of representing forks and jumping around. Um, on GitHub, you can do uh, small changes directly on the site. You don't even need to clone. Yeah, that's that was nice. Actually, I was going to say that, but it's not it's not a huge thing that I actually. Well, yeah, it's something. It's a, it's something nice. Um, Approve match per request. My, yes. My my number one reason is non technical. It's just that's where everybody else is. So it's kind of it's like trying to build a social network now against Facebook. It's just everyone's on Facebook. I don't know. It's just GitHub has got so much momentum and traction. I think it would be good for Orchard to be there. That that's my main thing. I think it would be good for Orchard. That's where everybody is. That's where millions of developers are looking at. They're not. Well, they're the leaving for folks. Well, the thing about GitHub is it's not. Um, there's not really that many C sharp projects on there. Yeah, I know. That's a problem. And we could be. We could start. You know. Just because there's one on there, Sebastian, doesn't mean there's a lot on there. Yeah, and and and, and the reverse on Codeplex, it's almost all C sharp and .NET. So. I like the idea of breaking convention and having a large .NET project on GitHub. I think it's good for the project. Uh, that's actually a really good one, Piotr. Diff rendering. Diff rendering is so quick on um, on uh, GitHub and really slow on Codeplex. Um, what do we have on Codeplex they don't have for them. Inline commands in. Uh... You know, ah, on GitHub, how you can you can yes, put comments. That's in. huge. That yeah, when you do code reviews, it's uh, it's really reviews. super useful. We have it in Codeplex too. Uh, yeah, but not everywhere. And you basically mm -hmm. have it where it's where it's not useful. Well, we have it in pull request. It should be in more places. If you look at where it is on GitHub and where it is on Codeplex, on Codeplex it's not 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 okay, at the right. Place. So if you can come with code details. review, just just write down code yeah. review. Code review in general, uh, code reviewing tools and yeah, um, I mean Bitbucket's done a great job with the code workflow review. for code reviews as well. Um, yeah, there's more. There's um. Uh, well, yeah, GitHub is for the hipsters, true. <laughs> and by going to GitHub, you are a hipster. Well, you have to wear a hat, yeah. By the way, GitHub has Markdown too, Sebastian. It's not. Yeah, I know. So that's not an advantage of code blocks. Markdown too. But you ask for new changes. So I said they changed it. Um, so, what's this meeting about then with you and um, the Copex well, guys? Feedback of how we use Codeplex. How... Yeah. Um, 
Ah. One thing that I really like is being able to... When you, when you fork... And I know that we said earlier that forks are not easy to use, but with, with GitHub, you fork and you almost your fork lives with you in a separate area. Whereas on Coplex, the fork kind of doesn't really live with you; it kind of just lives under the project. Makes sense. So in order to find it, yeah, you've got to kind of like yeah, navigate it's under it. your profile. Yeah, it's not really under your profile on Coplex. It is. Yeah, I think it is. Well, if you open your profile, it's listed there. You never, you never open your profile. That's the uh, issue. Hey, I have another one. I have another one, Sebastian. Uh, alerts. There isn't a intuitive, there isn't a way in Codeplex to get email alerts on commits per per per, per repo. Uh, if you follow it, and there is RSS feed. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you know. That's true, but email is different. You can get email alerts. I'm not a heavy GitHub user. I'm a heavy Bitbucket user, and there's... Yeah, well, the only reason why I use Bitbucket is because of the free private repos, but I like Bitbucket as well. Oh, I'm saying I like Bitbucket. Um, Bitbucket and GitHub are years ahead of Codeplex, is, is, is my experience. Codeplex is almost like left alone for 10 years. Yep. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, that's actually a good one. The status of the forks. Okay. You have almost 300 forks of Orchard, which ones are active? Yeah, fair point. So, which doesn't change the, the fact that we will move to Git? No. No. But, the move to Git's going to be disruptive. The move to GitHub, if, there, if it was going to happen, could also be disruptive. I don't know. Are you going to um, be moving your internal stuff to Git? Right. We, we will have to, I think, because we want to be able to merge um, merge the 1.x into our version of, yeah, we'll have to. It's going to be a disruptive test, too. I'm probably going to be moving my modules off of Mercurial um, as well to Git. But, but we will maybe, instead of moving ours to Git on Bitbucket, maybe we'll move ours to Git on GitHub. So that's where I'm moving my stuff to as well. Yeah, I need to think about that. Because Bitbucket, um, I mean, GitHub doesn't support Mercurial, otherwise, I would have moved there by now. Yeah, so we will have to move. So, has anyone tried the. Um... PowerShell stuff that has been. Um... Uh, just answering this one, 300 forks on Orchard, yes, because on GitHub forks are uh, users owned, which means, well, you see there are forks on your projects, but you don't care. In, in Codeplex, the forks are attached to the project, like Nick said. So it's like as an Orchard user, you see lots of forks and you would like to use them. And there is no management for that. There is no status for that. And most of them are dead. Uh, and in GitHub, is a different way of thinking forks. It's users who fork things, and they are for themselves. They don't. They are not here for providing features. Uh, they're cool, but they are not uh, advertised as is. Forking is really fast on GitHub as well. Uh, maybe it's Git too. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Because a, a, a fork a branch is just a, a fork. I'm not sure, but a branch is just a pointer. Maybe with Mercurial it's more than that. It shouldn't be though, should it? I know. Uh, not necessarily, actually. Moving to um, moving to Git from Mercurial doesn't mean that you have to lose all your history. There is a migration tool that can keep all the history for you. Yes, that, we will keep the history. Who said we yeah. will keep the history? Uh, but it's, 
I'm answering that guy uh, very because uh, he's migrating his own projects. So you don't have to. You, there is an import sort. And keep the history. Yeah. So instead of, well, there is two ways of moving to Git or GitHub. It's uh, converting the repository or creating a new one and importing your files. If you import a new files, yes, it will it will lose history. But if you convert the repository, it will keep the history. There are some import tools. History is important for us. OK, that's it, 120. Uh, keeps you up to date with uh, Git and uh, 1.7. OK. Bye. Talk to you next week. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.